So I was Bishop of Argentina, and prior to being Bishop of Argentina, I was Bishop of Northern Argentina, which was a separate diocese, and I was also presiding Bishop, Archbishop of the what's termed the Southern Cone, the south part, the southern part of, of South America. How did that come about? Well, although I look very British, I am an Argentine citizen. Um, I've got dual nationalities, two passports. Two armies called me up at the same time to do military service and so on. So I'm very much um, in, in the Argentine scene. I was born in Argentina amongst the Indians in the north, uh, living on the borders of Argentina and Paraguay. And my parents went out from the village of East Runton in 1926. Well, my father went out, my mother went out later, and they were both married out there. And I was, my father had this concept of not just communicating the Christian faith to people, but living it. So he said, well, I'm going to get married here, I'm going to have my children born here and everything else. So I was very much part of the local, local scene, really. And uh, then I went to a boarding school in Buenos Aires, um, for nine years, and then I came over to England in 1953 and uh, felt a call to ordination uh, then. Uh, actually, sitting in the public library here in Norwich, I was reading something, I think it was the Church of England yearbook, of all things, and felt that that's what I wanted to do. So then I went to Theological College and did a curacy in the Diocese of St Albans, and then married in 1962, and went back to Argentina in 1963 and remained out there for all our working life uh, with my wife and uh, came back to the UK, came to the UK in 2003. So that's the, that's the story. Since and then we've been retired in the village of East Ronton. So you're now back in Norfolk. Now we're back in Norfolk, and uh, but with all the modern sort of means of communication, we're sort of often sitting in Norfolk in my little cottage looking out on the the common um, but talking in Spanish to friends out there or two nights ago we were preparing a talk for a group of um, uh, people meeting. My son still works out there and he's recorded this on Skype so although we physically live here we're still mentally very much still out there. Now, of course, in the last 24 hours, not only has the Archbishop of Canterbury visited Norwich, a new Pope has been elected, and I believe you actually know him. Yes, well, during my time in in Buenos Aires, um, we were very much involved in ecumenical activities, and uh, he became Cardinal Archbishop, the Archbishop of of Argentina, and um, his cathedral and his living quarters were not very far away from our diocesan office in the center. And um, he always took a great interest in uh, in other Christian churches and Christian bodies. And um, I feel that is going to be probably his contribution, his understanding and probably above all sympathy with Christians of other groups is is, is very good, especially for the Roman Catholic Church at the moment where many, literally hundreds, both in Argentina and in Brazil and others, are being drawn into evangelical Pentecostal churches and so on. So I think if he can somehow bridge that gap, he'll he'll achieve great things. How would you describe his character? Um, He looked very shell-shocked on the television last night, didn't he? He is very shell-shocked to to, uh, sort of use a reiterated word that has been probably used ad nauseum, um, is is the quality of, of humility. Um, I think the way he, his body language, the way he just uh, lifted one one hand in, in recognition to the people and then just stood there and, and there was sort of silence for a while. And then his his first call to people, it wasn't for him to, to take the initiative to bless or pray for them, but uh, he asked them, to pray for him, which I thought was was very very good, so I think that that shows this quality of of humility. And another sm- brief anecdote: um, I was going to a meeting at Government House, which is in the Plaza de Mayo, the main plaza in Buenos Aires, and we were gathering together and getting into some semblance of a of order and in a queue. And I was not far from him, and 
saw him with his clerical collar on. So I went and spoke to him, and uh, in my conversation, I just asked him, "And where, do, where, do, where do you, where, where, where's your church? Where do you come from?" Oh, he said, "I'm your neighbour round the corner," and uh, he was the cardinal archbishop, and his cathedral was oh, not much more than probably 500 yards from from the Anglican Anglican cathedral in the centre of Buenos Aires. So that that's the sort of man he is, and we've heard that he travels by bus and travels by underground. But I, I don't think these are not gimmicky sort of things. They are rather a sort of a, a natural low... He's a, he's a natural uh, low profiler. He, he doesn't sort of look for the limelight and so on. So I, I think these... I, I don't know what being a pope is involved, but I'm sure these are qualities which will stand him in, in very good stead. I mean, you've mentioned some of his qualities. I mean, the Catholic Church is going through some quite difficult times at the moment. How do you think, knowing his character as you do, how do you think he will lead the Church through that? I think I, I don't think I, I I think that the the Roman Catholic Church, or those within the Roman Catholic Church who are optimistic that there's suddenly going to be great change, may be disappointed. This is just my outside point of view. I mean, his concept, our idea of women ministry, would be very traditional, as would um, his, his his views on gay marriage, on married priests, on abortion, and so on. Th- these would be aspects of the of the Roman Catholic uh, Church which would be non-negotiable. So he's he's a traditionalist in the sense that he will, I think, uh, stand by those things. Um, I think his qualities will be the ones I've just mentioned which may take a long time to sort of filter out to the people, but it is this his humility and his uh, his simplicity. Um, I noticed in one of the reports last night, uh, someone said that he's the, he's the non-smiling cardinal. Um, that may be true, non-smiling on his face, but I'm sure he has a, a smiling heart. One and uh, so. I think he'll... he'll he will do great things. I think especially after a man like Ratzinger, uh, Pope uh, Benedict, who was uh, uh, full of gravitas and serious and uh, a deep scholar. I'm not suggesting that uh, uh, Juan Jorge Mario Bergoglio is not a scholar. He's a, a Jesuit. I've never found a Jesuit who's not a scholar. But um, he has a simplicity of life and I think will speak and support and in uh, espouse the, the 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 case of the of the marginalized and the poor so i think there there these are the qualities that i think are very very important in the leader of a, such a, a large christian community and what does it mean to the people of argentina do you think um it's very rare to to have a non-european pope isn't it so yes. what what does it mean do you think to the people of argentina I don't think they've thought of what it means yet, but I think they were rather shell-shocked. Um, I mean, normally after some announcement of a, an Argentine triumph at football, there'd be how, you know t- hooting cars and everything else. I think they've, I think uh, uh, they've been taken by surprise, and suddenly realised, goodness me, we've <laughs> the Pope's an Argentine. So with all their sort of failings and their difficulties with um, politics and all the rest of it. I think having a, an Argentine pope will be a great, great boost to them, but I think this is something they're, they're going to suddenly, you know, begin to discover what, what's what's happened. And uh, finally, do you think you'll be able to get in touch with him and offer your congratulations? Oh, very, very, very much so. That he's the sort of person who, um, well, if when, when he writes to me, I'll send you a copy of his letter. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope he, I, I, I will be doing that. And I mean, the the sad thing for him is, as someone pointed out last night, that in his pocket is a return, a return ticket uh, to Buenos Aires, which, unless he's covered by insurance, <laughs> he won't get back again. And uh, it's not an easy task at his stage in life. He's seventy six. I thought, well, when I retired at sixty seven, and for him at seventy six to take on such a responsibility is a is a, is, a, is a great quality in itself, I think. And um, he has had health problems, so he's, I think he's a man we should pray for.